Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you've all had a good week. If you didn't catch my last video, you can go ahead and watch that one for a little catch up. I'd let you know what was all going on, where I've been. But now we're getting back to normal content on this channel, which I'm super excited about. And you're also probably noticing that I changed my channel name, or I'm pretty sure that change is gonna happen before this video goes up. So if I did change it, I hope you guys like it. But today we are getting into crock pot dinners as we get into the fall months. Definitely one of my favorites. And these are also going to be some healthy crock pot dinners. I feel like a lot of crock pot recipes that I find are not very good for you. They're filled with a lot of junk and additives. But these are actually pretty clean ingredients, pretty healthy when it comes to crock pot dinners. So I hope that you will enjoy all of these recipes. So for this first dinner, I'm making a really simple vegetable beef roast recipe. This is a really easy one, very healthy. These are all the veggies that I'm gonna be using on this day. I had some baby carrots, some chopped up red potatoes, as well as an onion. You could also add celery here if you wanted to, but I didn't have any on this day. So I'm just starting off with my large crock pot. I'm spraying that with a little bit of oil, like I always do to prevent sticking. And then I'm adding in my roast. So this is a rump roast, but you can really use whatever kind you want. You can also cook it a little bit on the sides just to get it browned if you want, but I opted not to just to make it a little bit easier. And then I'm just adding a little bit of salt, pepper, and garlic powder to both sides. Now that both sides of my roast are seasoned, I'm just adding in all of my vegetables here. So like I said, you can really play around with the vegetables, but I went for the classic, so I just have some red potatoes. You definitely want them in bigger chunks for all of your vegetables, just so they don't get too mushy in the crock pot. But I'm just adding all of those in. And then I'm also gonna be adding in some minced garlic. The recipe only called for a teaspoon, but I definitely added probably a couple of tablespoons. I love garlic. I definitely didn't want just a teaspoon, so I added a little bit more. And then I'm also adding in half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, half a teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of pepper. Of course, you can adjust all of those seasonings if you want, but that's what I added. For the liquid in this roast recipe, I'm just adding in some beef broth. I always use this better than bouillon beef base. I think it's really good. It's a lot cheaper to buy this than buy the cartons of stock. I always just warm it up in the microwave and then mix in some of the stock in there. And it always turns out really, really good. So I just cooked this low and slow for about eight hours in my crock pot. Once the roast was all done cooking and it was becoming tender and was falling apart, I just removed everything into a casserole dish and I'm actually gonna be thickening up the stock in there and I'm gonna be turning it into a gravy. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. But for now, I'm just removing everything and setting it aside. I did make sure to cover this with aluminum foil so it stayed warm until it was ready to serve the gravy. So as you can see here, I'm removing about two cups of this stock that was left in the bottom of the pot. I'm setting aside two cups of that and that's what I'm gonna use for the gravy. And then to thicken the gravy, I'm adding in two tablespoons of cornstarch with a quarter cup of water. I'm just gonna make a little cornstarch slurry and I'm gonna add this right into the two cups of the beef stock. Now, I decided to put mine back in the crock pot on a high and see if it would thicken up that way. And I think it eventually would have thickened, but my kids were getting really, really hungry. So I did end up putting it on the stove for it to thicken a little bit faster. All you really need to do is heat it up until it thickens. It was so much faster on the stove, so I did end up doing it that way. But you can do it in the crock pot if you want. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. And then I'm just shredding up my roast putting it back with the veggies. And this was a really, really delicious meal. If you're looking for a good, healthy beef roast recipe, this is definitely a really good one. Very flavorful, but simple ingredients. For this next recipe, I'm making some chicken fajitas in the crock pot. This is my first time trying this recipe out and we did really like it. So I'm just starting off by mixing up my fajita seasoning. So this is two and a half teaspoons of chili powder, two teaspoons of ground cumin, one teaspoon of paprika, and then three quarters teaspoon of oregano, one teaspoon salt, three quarters teaspoon of pepper. You can also pick up some fajita seasoning at the store if you don't want to make it from scratch. That would be the easiest option, but I already had all of the spices at home so I figured that was a much cheaper option for me. 
Now I forgot to film this part, but I just sprayed my crock pot with some olive oil and then I added in about half a can of some Rotel. And this is half of the bell peppers. So this is three bell peppers all sliced up and ready to go. I'm adding in half of those. And then this is half of a sliced white onion and I'm just adding that in there as well. The recipe called for about three cloves of minced garlic. I'm pretty sure I did about double that. You guys know I like my garlic. And then I'm adding in three large chicken breasts. I chose to use fresh here. And then I'm taking that fajita seasoning and I'm putting about half of it on top of the chicken. And then I'm gonna flip it over and add it to the other side as well. There was a little bit of seasoning left over so I ended up just sprinkling that on top at the end after I put all of the peppers and onions back on there. Now I'm adding in the other half of the can of Rotel tomatoes. Just sprinkle that right on top of the chicken. You're gonna want to add in the rest of your peppers and your onions right on top. And then I took the leftover fajita seasoning and sprinkled that right on top of everything. And I just cooked this on high for about two to three hours. I think mine ended up taking about two and a half hours, but just keep an eye on it. It really doesn't take very long and you don't want to overcook your vegetables. So this was a really simple one to throw in and we really, really enjoyed it. After the chicken was completely cooked through, I just shredded it up with two forks. If you want the chicken to be more finely shredded, you could also use a hand mixer. I would just make sure to remove it from the peppers and the onions first or it's gonna shred everything up and it might get kind of mushy. So you want to just remove the chicken if you're gonna do it that way. But I just took two forks because I wanted my chicken on the chunkier side. You could also slice it if you wanted to. And then I'm adding in a good squirt of some lime juice. I believe the recipe called for about two tablespoons. And you can also add in some honey if you want to. I chose to add a little bit of extra salt. I will have this full recipe linked down below though, so if you want to check out the recipe down there, it might be a little bit easier to follow. Here I'm just making my fajitas. I definitely would say I make them on the non-traditional side. I used wheat tortillas, a little bit of salsa. I skipped the cheese in mine and just added on some fresh veggies, but we actually really enjoyed these fajitas. They were really good, lots of flavor. Even my kids liked them. They weren't too spicy or anything, so I would definitely recommend this recipe. For this next recipe, this is one of my all-time favorites. This is vegetable beef soup. It's so good, especially in the fall time. So here in my Dutch oven, I'm just browning up one pound of some lean ground beef, and I'm also gonna be adding in one onion that was finely diced up. I like to make sure that my onion is nice and softened before I add it into the crock pot. Now for the veggies in this recipe, you can really play around with it, but I added in about two cups of peeled and chopped potatoes. I also added in about three stalks of celery and probably about four carrots. I made sure to finely dice up the celery and the carrots, but if you want to make this really easy on yourself, you could also add in about one and a half bags of some vegetables that are just frozen in the freezer section. I've done that before and it turns out really, really good. So if you don't want to take the time to chop everything up and get everything wash go ahead and use a bag of frozen vegetables and I promise you it turns out just as good but I'm just getting all of those veggies added into the crock pot Now I'm just adding in that ground beef that I had cooked up with the onions. I'm also adding in probably about a third cup of some frozen corn. You could also use canned corn if you want to. This is one can of petite diced tomatoes. And then the recipe actually calls for one can of some condensed tomato soup. But I had some pasta sauce left to use up in my fridge and this worked perfect for this recipe. I would definitely say that you can use pasta sauce or the condensed soup. Either way, they have a little bit of sweetness. So I would definitely recommend one of those it adds just a little bit of sweetness to the soup and it's really really good big scoop of minced garlic you're gonna want about a teaspoon of some salt one teaspoon of dried parsley half a teaspoon of some dried basil and then you're also going to want about one teaspoon of some Worcestershire sauce that adds really good flavor to this soup 
For the beef broth in this recipe, again, I'm just using the better than bouillon broth and I'm just adding that into some hot water and giving that a good mix and then I'm just gonna add that right into my crock pot. This adds so much flavor. I know some other vegetable-based soups like that, they don't really add a beef broth. Some of them are more tomato-based, but I definitely like the combination of the tomato and the beef broth. It turns out really, really good in this recipe. I usually cook this on high for about four to five hours. You really just wanna cook it until all of your vegetables are cooked through and all of the flavors have really worked together well. This is what the soup looks like after it has been cooking for about four to five hours. And you guys, this soup is one of my all time favorites. If you've never tried a vegetable beef soup recipe, definitely check this one out. It's one of our family favorites and my husband especially loves it as well. For this next recipe, I'm making some honey garlic chicken. Now this is a recipe that my sister actually gave to me. It's really good. It's not too strong in flavor for the kids or anything. It was just perfect. So I'm starting off by mixing up my sauce. So this is about four cloves of garlic, a third cup of honey, half a cup of ketchup, and then you're also going to want about half a cup of either some low sodium soy sauce, or I actually used coconut aminos for a little bit healthier option, half a teaspoon of dried oregano, and then I added in about one tablespoon of some dried parsley. You can also add um, sesame seeds to this recipe if you want to, but I opted to leave those out. Then I'm just spraying my crock pot with a little bit of oil. I'm adding in my chicken breast. Mine were frozen on this day, but you can use fresh or frozen. The original recipe I believe actually called for chicken thighs, but I decided to use the chicken breast and then I'm just pouring that sauce right over the top and I'm just gonna cook this until the chicken is all the way cooked through. I believe my took about four hours. After my chicken had fully cooked through, I'm just shredding it up with my hand mixer. Of course, you can also use two forks for this if you want to, but for this recipe, I really wanted some finely shredded chicken to pair over rice or pasta or whatever, and it worked really well. So I just am using my hand mixer to shred that up. Now this recipe did not call for broccoli, but I decided to add in one bag of frozen broccoli florets. This added really good flavor and it paired really well with this honey garlic sauce. I just wanted to have my veggie cooked in with the chicken. So I only added this in there for maybe like 20 minutes just until that broccoli kind of steamed up. And this paired really, really well. So I definitely would recommend doing this. And I just cooked that for a little bit and this was such a good dinner. I meant to serve it over rice, but it ended up not getting done. So I served it over some egg noodles and we really really enjoyed this one. Well, that is going to wrap up today's Crock-Pot video. I really hope that you all enjoyed these super quick and easy recipes. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more Crock-Pot videos and other quick and easy recipes on my channel. But that is it for today's video. I will see you all next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.